welcome to this week's Fundamentals. My name is Thomas and I'm the host of this channel. This week I would like to discuss my point of view about NFTs. I will discuss what is an NFT, what type of NFTs exist, what is the current problem with NFTs, well, how are the copyrights regarding an NFT. So all in all, this is a video is a must watch if you want to invest in NFTs. So with that said, let's jump into this week's video. So I will start off by explaining what is an NFT. An NFT is a non-fungible token. So there is fungible tokens and there is non-fungible tokens. I will explain it based on these four criteria. So interchangeability. Fungible tokens are easily interchangeable through there is no additional value associated with the interchanging fungible tokens. So a fungible tokens is a Bitcoin. There's 21 million of them and one Bitcoin is equal to another Bitcoin. They both represent the same value. And non-fungible tokens are not interchangeable as each of them represents unique assets. So one NFT is not equal to another NFT. Then value transfer. The value transfer uh, depends on the number of tokens in an ownership of a person. So the value transfer of three times uh, three bitcoins is three times the price of Bitcoin. The value transfer of an NFT is just that NFT. There is no duplication or there is no um, extra value. It is just that NFT. Then divisibility. So fungible tokens can be divided into smaller parts. So for Bitcoin, you can divide it in Satoshis. You can also send half a Bitcoin, you can send 0.2 Bitcoin, or you can send 10 Satoshis. Um, there is different parts of the Bitcoin. Then an NFT is not divisible. You either buy the whole NFT or you buy nothing at all. Then standard tokens. Fungible tokens depend on the ERC-20 standard. So that is a Ethereum standard, while the non Fungible tokens leverage on the ERC-721 standard. So that is, the, that is another difference. Then, what type of NFTs do we have? So the first NFT that I'm gonna talk about is art. So the most valuable NFT ever sold is called Every Days, the first 5,000 days by renowned artist Beeple. So Beeple creates one uh, piece of art every single day. He Put the old, for 5,000 days, he put it together and he sold this piece for $69 million. So that is the most expensive NFT sold until now. Then there is also music. So I earlier already discussed the Audius project, which I will link under this video, where musicians can sell their uh, music pieces, either unique mu music pieces or music past music pieces. Uh, directly to the customer. So musicians typically only pocket a fraction of the money that their music generates due to streaming platform cuts and record label cuts. When it comes to NFTs, musicians can keep roughly 100% of the money, which is why so many musicians are turning towards this method. So the third one is video game items. So companies aren't uh, selling entire games as NFTs but they rather sell in-game content like skins, characters, and other items. One of the biggest uh, competitors in this space is Engine. I will also link this video below. Then we have trading cards, collectibles. NFTs can be thought as digital trading cards. We all know about limited edition baseball cards selling for thousands of dollars, and the NFT market isn't so much different. So we have crypto, Punks and Crypto Kitties, where there is only 10,000 available and the collector wants to have as many as possible. Then we have big moments in sports. So NFTs offer something that doesn't really have physical equivalent, memorable sports moments. These are clips of significant moments in sports history, like groundbreaking slam dunks or game-changing touchdowns. These clips can be as short as 10 seconds, but sell up towards $200,000. Then there is memes. Some of the most popular memes like Neon Cat, Bad Luck Brian, Disaster Girl, and others are on the list, racking between 30,000 and 770,000. The most valuable meme to date is the Dodge meme, which was sold for a jaw-dropping $4 million. Then domain names. Domain names are unsafe from the space of NFT fever as well. You can register a domain name, a domain name and sell it on an NFT market, and that comes with a certain benefit. So I also bought my own NFT, my own domain name, uh, which is my full name .wallet for future purposes. And then there is virtual fashion. 
And there are many other um, NFT options as that uh, created the last NFT market crash. Then the NFT market space is booming again, but experts say there are five challenges the digital collectible space needs, still needs to overcome. So what are those five challenges? So the first one is authenticity. There are currently limited tools to determine the authenticity of NFTs. So how do you make sure that this NFT is the real one and not the copycat? This is hard to say. You have to look at the back data, you have to see who was the owner, and it's very hard to verify which one was the first and which ones are the copycats. Unless you have a limited supply as with CryptoPunks. Then scalability. The majority of NFT marketplaces are currently powered by general layer one blockchains like Ethereum. The problem with the layer one blockchain is that they're very costly, so they're very expensive. So we're waiting now for updates on layer two, and there is a video that I will leave below, which I made earlier, to show that scalability is a problem because it creates a, an entry, because people don't want to have high fees for exchanging NFTs. Then we have interoperability. While most NFTs are on the Ethereum blockchain, others can host them as well, such as Binance, Smart Chain, and Flow. So imagine that you create one NFT and you release them on Ethereum, on Binance and on Flow at the same time. How do you differentiate what is the real NFT? What is the, the first one? And what is the unique NFTs? And which are the copycats? So that's very hard to decide nowadays. Then there is storage. So acquiring an NFT is one thing, but the safe storage of an underlying uh, data is not trivial. Most NFTs simply have an external hyperlink. So you only have that external hyperlink. You can't store it on cold storage. So we still need to develop security measures around NFTs. Then accessibility. More and more investors may be gaining awareness of NFTs, but the barrier to participate is still relatively high. So with these, in order to buy those assets, you need to have browser wallets. You need to know about security. And where for Bitcoin and fungible assets, it's way easier. You can just go through a middleman. You can use Binance or Coinbase. For NFTs, this is way harder and it's way more difficult. So this is a barrier to entry. So last but not least, it's important what rights you have if you buy an NFT. So NFTs govern ownership of the token, not the underlying IP rights. Ownership of an NFT as a unique token versus ownership of the content that such NFT may associate it with is a critical distinction. When someone purchased an NFT tied to a piece of content, they have not out automatically purchase the underlying intellectual property rights in such a piece of content. Under section 106 of the US Copyright Act, a copyright owner has certain exclusive rights to reproduce, prepare derivative works, off, perform, display, and distribute the copyrighted work. As a general rule, the purchases of a piece of art does not transfer all the copyrights in such work to the buyer. For example, when somebody buys a painting, at an art gallery for their home, they are acquiring the physical painting itself, which they can then display, but not their underlying rights to reproduce, making derivative works of or distribute copies such as a painting. So by owning an NFT, you don't automatically have any rights regarding the NFT. So you can own a meme, you can own um, sports moments from the past, but you don't have the right to distribute or to press them on t-shirts. So you own the NFT, but you can't make any money. You can't make any passive income out of this NFT. In reality, the underlying copyrights only transfers if the copyrights owner evidences in writing that they intend to transfer those rights alongside with the copy of the work. Unless the NFT owner has received implicit permission from the seller, the NFT owner does not automatically acquire their legal right to take pictures of the creative work attached to the NFT or make t-shirts or postcards for scale. So this needs to be very clear for people. When you buy the NFT, you don't buy the rights to distribute it. With memes, that is a whole different situation because a meme uh, doesn't really have any ownership, but with specific sports moments, the, 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 the major of the league or the organizer of that sports event still has the rights over your video. You just can say, I am the unique owner of this NFT. 
So without the rights behind the NFTs in images and art, I don't really see the value in owning those rights. And I would be curious to hear your opinion. Do you think that the NFTs, uh, as you can see, valued at 17 million without any copyright rights is worth it? Let me know in the comments below. So with that said, this is the end of the video. If you like this content, please like and subscribe and share it with your friends. Have a nice weekend and I hope to see you next week. Bye.